Hey guys. Well, I took a little time this weekend to take the spindle out of the Precision Matthews. I'm going to be replacing the bearings with some notchy bearings as well as installing a spindle that I have threaded for a top hat that will later uh, be used on a power drawbar. And then that way I can also get the belt drive going. So this is the first step in order to convert the mill over to belt drive. You'll remember in a earlier video I made these pulleys. I know it's been quite a while since that occurred, but that was to go over and then the top hat screws down on that and fastens the pulley to the spindle like so now there's been quite a bit of changes uh, part of the reason why it's taking so long to get this belt drive going as you guys know I'm going to be switching over to DMM servos which will require me to build a new control box so with that upgrade coming um, the belt drive is going to change as well I'm getting rid of the one horsepower motor that I currently have uh, mounted here and this is this is an IEC metric motor which is great because it bolts right up to the stock low uh, gearbox and I can run this through Mach 3 uh, it will it is a 3400 rpm motor so I've increased the gearbox RPM to 3400 and originally that was what I was going to go with uh, with the DMM upgrade I decided I would go with a one and a half horsepower motor and I was going to use AC bearings in the spindle and try to increase the RPMs However, I realized there's just not enough room in the spindle housing to get a double stack of bearings. And without doing that, you're really not benefiting from going with the AC bearings. And I think it'll just induce more run out by only using two bearings. So I decided to go back with uh, notchy bearings, which are just your tapered roller bearings. And those are limited to 7,500 RPMs on the top bearing, which is the smaller one, and 5,600 RPMs on the bottom bearing. So with all of that going on, and the fact that because I'm not really tying to the gearbox anymore, I don't need a metric motor that has the 19 millimeter shaft. And to be honest, I can go with any motor. So after speaking with uh, some friends, Wyatt, Chris, some buddies of mine, Graham that I Skype with on a regular basis, uh, I've just decided to upgrade to a completely different motor. This is just a standard inverter duty marathon type motor. It's a good bit bigger than the motors I'm using now. It's still a hour, uh, one and a half horsepower, but it's it's a thousand to one torque it's going to really be a, a a big improvement so with that I decided to take my uh, spindle apart and start to uh, rebuild it with the new uh, threaded spindle and get some new bearings in there and then that way I'll be on my way to the belt drive upgrade I'm still going to use the motor I'm currently using uh, temporarily until I get the control box built and then I'll swap it over to the bigger motor so let me take a minute and show you I I was out here working and I didn't think to film it but I took all these bearings out and I really didn't know how much trouble it was going to be so let me just kind of go over and do a review of how I got these bearings out so this bearing here is the bottom bearing and it goes down over the shaft 
or over the spindle and it sits like so. So it slides down and gets pressed onto this race here. Now that one, in order to get this off, I just turned it upside down and took a wooden block and placed it around here. And then I used a dead blow hammer to just kind of tap around it lightly. And it came off fairly easy. The race, however, was down inside the spindle. But luckily, you could reach underneath it here and grab it. So what I did was, this was pressed down in there. So I just took a bearing puller and I was able to use these arms to grab it like so. But you can see I don't have anything to push on. So what I did was, I backed the puller off, and then I laid a bar across here, and grabbed it. Maybe you can see that. And then I was able to just pull it up until it was flush with the bottom of this. And once it got to the bottom of that, uh, I was able to work it out. Now for the top side, it was pretty much the same situation. This bearing race was pressed in there. And so what I did was, I couldn't really lift it because it was kind of flush with this. So I couldn't use the bar situation because it was kind of already flush. So what I did was, see if I can get this situated. I just took this and put it in my vise. And this particular vise has this square tubing here. So I set it like that. I was able to take a shaft, sit it on top of that square tubing, then press against that as this was clamped in there and it just pulled the bearing completely out, or the race completely out. It was really very simple. Um, it didn't take much time and I was really happy with the way it turned out. Uh, to be honest, it came out fairly easy, so I was really pleased with that. So now that I've got it all out, um, of course this bearing was, went in the top like so and it just slid over, the, slid over like that. Then you had this uh, castle nut that screwed down to tighten it until you got the right tension and a lock ring with these bendable tabs that you just bent up to lock it in pretty simple straightforward stuff there uh, pretty self-explanatory I think so now I'm ready to clean this up and install my new bearings now the new bearings I'm going to be using some of this Kluber Isoflex 15. This is pretty much standard. Everybody seems to be using this. I got this from CNC Specialty Store. Now I didn't get it recently. This was several years ago. Uh, this is a 50 gram tube and it goes a long way. So, But I'll be packing the bearings with the Kluber, uh, Kluber Isoflex and uh, seeing if I can't get this thing back together. So let's do that. Okay, so I've got the spindle cleaned out. I'm going to start installing the race first. If you've got a, a press, this would probably be the best way to do that. I do have a press, but it is not tall enough. It's just a small little one-ton arbor. I'm going to just try to gently tap this in place. Take a block of wood and a dead blow. Now 
needs to go down probably a little bit further. So I'm going to take the old race, place it on top. Just make sure. I get it down. Feels like it's down all the way. So that top one's in. And we'll put the bottom one in. This one actually just slid in, so. All right, so we've got our bearing races in. And you can kind of see, maybe, up under here that there is a, a lip that you can grab. So, you can see you can get up under there. All right. Next, we want to put our bearing down on our spindle. I think I'll grease these after I get this down on there. I'll be able to work, I should be able to work the grease down in there. So let's just do that. That might be the easiest thing. I've got the bearing on here, but I need a way to get it all the way seated. So what I did was I found a piece of aluminum tubing which is nice however it's it's really too big because it hits the bearing instead of the race so I made this little adapter out of some nah, PVC you could use aluminum whatever you got and now you can see that that'll just hit the race and so I can knock that down. So what I'll do is I'll put my pipe over like so and then I can just tap on the top of the tubing. Alright. Looks like it's seated pretty good. So you may have to improvise somehow, make sure they're real nice and clean and get some grease in them. Alright, it's pretty messy, so uh, let me get that and then we'll try to clean, uh, get it all put back together. Alright, so after trying to put this together, I realized that this bearing here was very tight on this race. And so, the way this works is... As you tighten the as you tighten the nut it presses this towards the other bearing against the two races so you need it needs to be such that it can move up and down slightly you don't want it real tight and so what it was it was real tight on my old spindle it moved a little bit however on the new one that I had threaded it did not so I took it and put it on the lathe took some real fine grit sandpaper and just worked it down until I was able to get the bearing so that it would uh, move up and down freely on the uh, bearing surface here so now that I think I have that I can go ahead and put it together. I've got a little bit of kubler in there. I've got kubler on the bearing here. And then I'll pack some more in from the back side uh, once I get it assembled. Let's get this in. Like so. Okay. 
Make sure I've got some grease in this. It looks pretty good, but I'm going to add a little more. Get it worked in there real good. I just pack these just the way you would wheel bearings. Uh, I okay. You can see how it slid down on there, and that's what you want. So we will put the uh, keeper washer on there. And the spanner nut, if I can get it started. There we go. Now, yesterday it was so tight, and when I went to spin it, I could barely spin it. But now I can see that it's spinning pretty good. And from a consensus of a few of my CNC friends that I uh, talk with on a daily basis, uh, you want to be able to get a spin out of it and you don't want any play so that I think that right there feels pretty good yeah feels pretty good however you want to try to line up one of your little notches here with the keeper so let me see if I can't get just a little more Like that. That feels pretty good right there. And you can see that I have this keeper lined up, so I'll just push it in place. Alright, so I've got that keeper in there now. You can see it's locked in there. Feels pretty good. Doesn't feel too tight, doesn't feel bound up. Make sure we got plenty of grease in here. This little keeper ring goes in the bottom here. Alright, I have to get something to tap that and uh, tighten that up. Okay, well I just took a hammer and a punch and just tightened that up. Should be good to go now. We can put this back into the mill. And we're the one step closer to having our belt drive done. Alright guys, that wraps up the spindle bearing replacement. Um, you can kind of see some wearing if you look real close. You can kind of see some scarring there. In the center. But, I did run these bearings you know twice what they were supposed to be ran at but they should have handled it I don't know what brand this is it says C and U on there but if you are looking for uh, spindle bearings for the Precision Matthews 727 the big bearing is 30207 
and the smaller bearing is 30205. But thanks for watching guys. If you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to comment. Um, my videos are kind of sporadic and uh, just kind of bouncing all over the place. Um, because that's the way my life seems to be going at the moment. Hopefully I'll try to get on something steady and I can stay with it. Thumbs up if you like the video. Thanks for watching. And most importantly, be safe.